and welcome to our students, parents, and guardians, guests, and community partners to the 2017 Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program Completion and Next Steps Ceremony. My name is Kelly Chason. I'm the OYAP Coordinator with the Trillium Lakelands District School Board. And I would like to introduce my fellow OYAP Coordinators. Tanya Reitmeyer from Port of Pine Ridge. Margaret Murray from Peterborough, Victoria, Northumberland, Clarington Catholic. Andrea Ellsworth from Durham Catholic District School Board. And Denise Sturton from Durham District. from the Ontario College of Trades, Durham College and Fleming faculty, the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development, as well as the senior administration from our coterminous school boards who are in attendance tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> to all of you, thank you for joining us this evening as we come together to honor our OEAP students for their hard work and dedication this year. To start off our evening, we are very excited about our keynote speaker. I would like to turn the microphone over to Andrea Ellsworth to introduce our guest. I am pleased to introduce this evening someone who is a passionate supporter of the skilled trades. Pat Blackwood was the former National Director of Skilled Trades for the Canadian Auto Workers National Union and in September of 2013 was the first Director of Skilled Trades for the new Union Uniform. He had previously worked as a CAW National Skilled Trades Representative for six years. He served his millwright apprenticeship at General Motors and worked as a millwright in both construction and maintenance for over 17 years. Mr. Blackwood was a past board member executive committee member and a past chair of the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum from 2007 to 2014. Mr. Blackwood is currently serving as the chair of the Ontario College of Trades. He is also chair of the Executive Complaints and Regulations Committees. Mr. Blackwood is a very strong advocate for the skilled trades and apprenticeships as a viable career choice for you. Mr. Blackwood, welcome. send them greetings. I was at the summit today with uh, MASD and uh, training a high, highly skilled workforce. They were doing a, a stakeholder engagement. I met a lot of OYAP coordinators there, speaking on behalf of the OYAP people to make sure that things are going proper and then any changes they need for seats and whatnot, employers. So it was very good. Got on the go train and headed back here. So first, I want to congratulate the young people here whose hard work, dedication, talent led to them successfully completing their OEAP training. I wish you all the best on your continued journey towards interesting and meaningful skilled trades careers. I know that the many valuable skills and experiences that you gained in your studies will help you shape and jumpstart your promising futures. And I happened to meet a couple people on the way in, a young student that just is going to graduate and is going to become an apprentice mechanic, ASD, auto service tech, and I think he said nurse. So I wish him all the luck. I did say make sure you sign a registered training agreement because otherwise you're not getting credit for your hours and in a compulsory trade you'd be violating the law. So oh yeah, the employer participants who are very important in this program and all the OEAP coordinators and representatives do a fantastic job the delivery of the OEAP program. Now in Ontario, it's OEAP. In other provinces, they have other names, like RAP. There's all different names for the School to Work Apprenticeship Program, but in Ontario, it's called OEAP. Now for, give you a little bit of information about the college and what we do, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the Ontario College of Trades, we are an industry-driven regulatory body that protects the public interest. 
We came live in 2013 of April, April 2013. And we make sure that individuals that come into your home to perform skills of a compulsory trade, which there's 23 in Ontario, like plumbing or electrical work, have the training and certification to do a proper job and legally do the work. And you can check this out on our public registrar. So if someone came into your home and they said they're an electrician, you could put their name into our registrar and it would tell whether or not the person's got a CFQ. And even if they have their CFQ, maybe they're not that great of an electrician and they've had some discipline along the way. It's no different than any other regulatory body like the teachers, lawyers, doctors. This is a true profession. It's to hold the standards high to a professional level. So our public register last year had 1.3 million hits from the public checking out who's coming into their house or whether the mechanic that's going to work on their car is properly certified. The college also has a governance structure that provides skilled trades of voice. Trade boards, division boards, and board of governors ensure that the over 150 trades in Ontario have their voice represented at the table. And I met a young woman up there tonight, and she's trying to get on a trade board. She thought maybe I could help her. I can't. Because the, Army, the Appointments Council for the Trade Boards, the Division of Board and Board of Governors is arm length from us. So if there's any trade people in here that want to be on a trade board, Board of Governors or, or Division of Board, we are looking for them. We've got, we got like 300 openings a year. There's that many trade boards and, and Division of Board people are leaving and going, coming and going. So make sure you go to the Appointments Council website and put your name in. We'd love to have you. I've always been a strong advocate of hands-on program like OEAP, which allows young people to explore the many skilled trades opportunities that exist in Ontario. Another significant part of the college mandate is to pr promote apprenticeship and skilled trades as a viable career choice. As students here today can attest from their recent experiences, skilled trades do offer engaging, creative, and rewarding work. Currently, the average age of an apprentice is 27. This is why we need more youth in the trades, and we need them entering the apprenticeships right out of high school, like that young guy I spoke to tonight. And then you can earn what you learn. You earn money while you're learning your trade, and you don't come out with a huge student debt like people that go to college or university do. So really, parents, it's a good idea if your kids get into the skilled trades. It's less on your pocketbook, and it's gonna make them have a viable career for the rest of their life. With the aging demographics, a career in the trades is not only possible, but is needed to help the Ontario renew its skilled trades workforce and build a stronger economy. I keep saying it's going to be a skilled short shortage work, like a shortage. It's here. It's here today. I was at a council meeting in Calgary uh, this week, a Unifor council meeting, and of all the reports from the different plants, they're saying they're looking for electricians, they're looking for millwrights, they're looking for pipe fitters, and they can't get them. And that's right here in Ontario, in the GTA area. I'm not talking about up north, Sudbury, or, or Sault Ste. Marie. We're talking the GTA. I'd really like to thank the mentors, the teachers, parents, family members for their support in helping these young people complete their OEM. I'd also like to thank Kelly Chason from the Troy and Lakelands District School Board, Andrea Ellsworth from the Durham Catholic District School Board, Denise Sturton from Durham District School Board, Margaret Murray from Peterborough, Victoria, and Northumberland, Clarington Catholic District School Board. <laughs> and Tanya Reitmeyer from Kawartha Pine Ridge District School Board. Now there's a name, Kawartha Pine Ridge District School Board. You all play a vital role in opening the door for students to explore and work in the skilled trades profession, and the passion that you bring to the job is very important and, and transfers over to the youth. Today, though, I'm urging parents in this room to discuss the benefits to their sons and daughters about continuing the skilled trades training and apprenticeship program. There is unlimited career opportunities in the skilled trades and the looming shortage, as I said earlier, is here now. That's why celebrations like today are so important. They are paving the way for more discussions around helping youth discover potential while addressing the skill shortage. In fact, it sees early opportunities that allow students to develop specialized and employable skills that eventually helps them launch meaningful and viable careers in the skilled trades. Supporting diversity in the trades is also something I'm very passionate about. This is the second time I spoke at this event, and the second time that I asked how many young women are in this program. And it was the second time that they didn't know. 
But I think it's very important to know how many women are interested in becoming into the skilled trades because we're trying to elevate that number. Right now it's about one in 10, two in 10, which is far too low. The skilled trades is good for everybody, not just males, also females and underrepresented groups. We gotta do our work to make sure we continue to work on that. So I speak about it all the time. The college has done extensive work promoting these viable career options to underrepresented groups, including youth, women, aboriginals, and new Canadians. We conduct outreach programs in different communities across the province on the benefits of trades as a career and offer extensive range of online services to these groups. For example, I just said this, did you know according to the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum, which the board I still sit on, uh, did a survey and found that one in 10 is a woman of the trades. So I know from experience that these opportunities give young people, particularly young women, positive and authentic experiences that can help them form their future paths and choices. We see many of these success stories at the college. One individual we met while we were doing a tour of the UA Local 140, no, Local 46 in Toronto. Her name was Simone Hewitt. And if you look at any of our advertising at the college, Simone will be in one of those pictures because she's very photogenic. And from the time that I met her in her second year, we've used her as a, as a kind of a, a beacon to get more women into the trades. Her young son convinced her that she should be getting into the trades so she could support, so she's a single mother, so she could support her son. So she trained as a steam fitter and couldn't be happier with working with her hands and seeing the results of the work that she does every day. Simone recently achieved a Red Seal endorsement and obtained a certificate of qualification for a steam fitter trade. She knows that this ticket is a ticket to a stable and well-paying career. In fact, within days of achieving her certificate of qualification, Simone got a job for Matrix North American Construction on a newly developed Trans-Canada Napanee Generating Station. So there you go, steam fitter, sounds like a heavy duty trade. She's a woman, she's doing it, and so can you. At the college, we are doing our part to help connect skilled trades, base, apprentices, and employers. To help these people get into the trades, those looking to hire, the college created a hirewithconfidence.ca. This is a job site that's used by employers, journey persons, and those looking for apprenticeships. To post jobs, resumes, and search for work. We're trying to bring people together. Eventually, our hope is that this resource will be a one-stop shop for tradespeople, sort of like a workopolis for hiring and working in the skilled trades in Ontario. Earn while you learn. To help young people navigate the sometimes complex journey to apprenticeship, the college also offers a youth-oriented website called earnwhileyoulearn.ca. It details all the different trades available in Ontario, as well as the dynamic videos and inspiring stories of some apprentices that are currently going through the process. It's a great resource for those looking for more information about starting an apprenticeship. In case you're not happy with the one you tried in OEF and want to try something different, this is a website to go to. In addition to our EarnWhileYouLearn.ca website, the college also created campaigns to encourage more youth to get into the trades. A couple of years ago, we had the one with uh, the music video, with the head country music. We had about 60,000 visits to our website. This year, we went to showcase the scenes of uh, tradespeople who work behind the scenes on films and TV. And this uh, Make It Work or Make Your Mark campaign video follows a young girl as she, her, her interest evolves into an exciting and rewarding behind the scenes skill trades career where she makes her mark as a carpenter in the film and TV industry. And that video has received over 120,000 hits, double a bulk of music video. So the bottom line is that skilled trades career can take you places and inspire a sense of satisfaction for a job well done. And it doesn't have to be in a plant. It could be at a rock concert, setting up the stage, hooking up the wires, being a chef on this on the on the on the where the concert's going on, or you could be behind the TV cameras doing all the work behind the TV cameras. Most importantly, the trades people in our videos have what we call at the college pride in the profession. They value the work they do and feel accomplished with the results that they achieve. And what's more, qualified tradespeople earn excellent wages. You can come out of an apprenticeship with money in that bank, credit union, I don't think support banks. It's truly an earn while you learn this experience and a well-paying career waiting for you. So in closing, I, again, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address all the graduates here tonight. I'm very happy for you. There's nothing more 
better than seeing someone that's going to be starting an apprenticeship. I can't say you all are doing that, but the ones that I've seen that are, there's smiles on their face. Uh, the future is bright for these career paths in Ontario, and they've played a vital role in our infrastructure, development, and economic growth. So once again, thank you. Congratulations to the students here today, as well as everybody at OEF for providing such an important educational experience for our students. And uh, keep up the good work. Thank you very much.
I've, I've met several students. I have one student who's now in her level two of her, her electrical apprenticeship. She was an OEAP student, then she came back as an electrical engineering technician and uh, is doing an amazing job. And that story can be for a lot of people if, if you're not able. I know there's some employer opportunities here as well for those that maybe aren't continuing with their level one uh, employer. But um, I just want to congratulate you. I know we enjoy being your faculty in college and I'm sure that those at Fleming College feel the same way. It's always exciting to have young apprentices in our hallways and, and thank you very much. Speak 
that she got here when she saw the number of people. Thank you, Avery. Jose Urbina is an OEAP student in the electrical program and will share a few words about his OEAP experience. Jose? from the uh, OEF program, you know, we're getting our level one. So, you know, it was all thanks to our teachers' hard work that they put in their hours, because, for example, I know that one of our teachers, they had um, work along with the college that they kept on doing, as well as doing their own, uh, finishing up some of their own work as a, in another program, an apprenticeship program. So I uh, really appreciate it to that teacher. I'm just gonna call him out, he's gonna be here. His name is Jeff. Uh, thank you very much for helping us and guiding us and taking the time to uh, take, uh, take us through this journey and get us to where we are right now. And being in the OEF electrical program has been the best thing for me by far. I have learned so many things as to how to read blueprints, how do you uh, read the instrumental balloons that there is in uh, factory machines. I also learned how to do some nice practical installations such as um, fluorescent light bulbs or doing some nice pipe bending, you know. It was, it was lots of fun. So I think well, one, of the one of the more challenging things that we've had to do, and it's actually just managing the time that we had to do our work and staying focused in class, but I think that's, you know, with time, it comes. But, you know, <laughs> what can I say? You know, we've made it so far, and so far we've done so good, and hopefully we're gonna keep on uh, giving it our best as the electrical students, and we're gonna keep on going forward and to reaching our goal to get that electrical license. So from here on out, thank you very much um, for letting me speak a little bit, but you know, a little bit of a time limit too. <laughs> We will now present the completion certificates to the OEAP students. Since many students have not yet finished their program, these certificates are an acknowledgement of your hard work and your dedication to the OEAP program. So please don't think that now that you have a certificate in your hand, you don't have to go to class on Friday or Monday. <laughs> so this is the exciting part that everybody's been waiting for. As we call up each class, we invite our OEAP instructors who are present to join us on stage to help you with your certificates. I would ask the audience to kindly hold your applause until the end of the presentations. So what will happen is, as we call each class up, we ask you just to line yourselves up along the wall, and we will call you in alphabetical order for those that are present tonight. And then you'll come across the stage, and you'll exit and go off before you hit the veins here. So. Um, so we're going to start with our largest program, our automotive service technicians. We have 40 seats in this program at Durham College. So if you're in automotive service, could you please line up against the wall? Could I ask also who is presenting the OPOT certificates to please come up on stage? Jacob Brill. 
Braden Bullen. Cy Canning. Alex Cote. Gavin Durkin. Tyler Drew. Jonah Eman. Joshua Hack. Rajiv Hardell. Eric Howden. Lucas Antamos Tomasi. <laughs> Philip Kahn. <laughs> Kaden Clausen. Samantha Legere. Thomas McAteer. Zachary Nichols. Gagan Di Pramar. Damian Robitaille. Isaiah Sheridan Jordan. Cheyenne Snake. Curtis Swain. Adriano Terzo. Jada Calhoun. Laura Clark. Jonathan Kidd. Thank you. 
Rihanna Pierre. April Risto. Logan Smith. Alyssa Stinson. Justin Trunks. Brandon Warford. And Emma Will Will Whittington. <laughs> And that is our cook program. Unfortunately, some of the uh, members of the uh, Child Development Practitioner class couldn't be with us tonight, but we do have Cassandra Chambers. Aaron Lewis. Nicholas Quirk.
Michael River. Sean Scriber. John Paul Haney. <laughs> Megan Gillis. <laughs> Colleen Greenhall. Terrell Harrison. Matthew Howlett. Brendan Zinga. Tariq Allen. <laughs> Emily Brackenridge. Victoria Denunzio. <laughs> Hannah Deans. <laughs> Caitlin Drury.
Jade Northwest. Amanda Power. Julian Santos Toledo. Ali Scully. Angelica Sutherland. Kayla White Dunstan. And congratulations to all the here. Brandon Adams. Thomas Barassa. Nicholas Dosa. Sebastian Hansel. Mitchell King, Samantha Leon, Bradley Preston, <coughs> Easton Stone, <coughs> and Hannah Wallace.
the Wilders to take a place in the South Coast. Sean McNamee, Avery Temperio,
Noah Yamashita. Ladies and gentlemen, your general carpenters.
take this opportunity to meet with our community partners and mingle. But before we do that, I want to thank our co-op teachers, our coordinators, uh, the students, and um, anyone else that submitted photos for the slideshow. <laughs> we have lots of food and uh, 